I got the whole story, but not from Norman. I got it from his mother. Norman Bates no longer exists. He only half existed to begin with. And now, the other half has taken over. Probably for all time. Did he kill my sister? Yes. And no. Well, now, look, if you're trying to lay some psychiatric groundwork for some sort of plea, this fellow would like to cop this. <laughs> A psychiatrist doesn't lay the groundwork. He merely tries to explain it. But my sister is... Yes. Yes, I'm sorry. The private investigator, too. If you drag that swamp somewhere in the vicinity of the motel, you... Uh, have you any unsolved missing persons cases on your books? Yes. Two young girls. Did he confess to... Like I said, the mother. Now, to understand it the way I understood it, hearing it from the mother, that is, from the mother half of Norman's mind, you have to go back ten years to the time when Norman murdered his mother and her lover. Now, he was already dangerously disturbed. Had been ever since his father died. His mother was a clinging, demanding woman. And for years, the two of them lived as if there was no one else in the world. Then she met a man. And it seemed to Norman that she threw him over for this man. Now, that pushed him over the line, and he killed them both. Matricide is probably the most unbearable crime of all. Most unbearable to the son who commits it. So he had to erase the crime, at least in his own mind. He stole her corpse. A weighted coffin was buried. He hid the body in the fruit cellar. Even treated it to keep it as well as it would keep. And that still wasn't enough. She was there. But she was a corpse. So he began to think and speak for her. Give her half his life, so to speak. At times, he could be both personalities, carry on conversations. At other times, the mother half took over completely. Now, he was never all Norman. But he was often only mother. And because he was so pathologically jealous of her, he assumed that she was as jealous of him. Therefore, if he felt a strong attraction to any other woman, the mother's side of him would go wild. When he met your sister, he was touched by her, aroused by her. He wanted her. That set off the jealous mother, and mother killed the girl. Now, after the murder, Norman returned as if from a deep sleep. And like a dutiful son, covered up all traces of the crime he was convinced his mother had committed. Why was he dressed like that? He's a transvestite. Uh, not exactly. A man who dresses in women's clothing in order to achieve a sexual change or satisfaction is a transvestite. But in Norman's case, he was simply doing everything possible to keep alive the illusion of his mother being alive. And when reality came too close, when danger or desire threatened that illusion, he'd dress up, even to a cheap wig he bought. He'd walk about the house, sit in her chair, speak in her voice. He tried to be his mother. And uh, now he is. Now, that's what I meant when I said I got the story from the mother. You see, when the mind houses two personalities, there's always a conflict, a battle. In Norman's case, the battle is over, and the dominant personality has won. And the $40,000? Who got that? The swamp. These were crimes of passion, not profit. 